Hi. Those of you that have followed uh, my previous exploits will recognise this digitally enhanced map. This is one that we used to follow the line from Shetland, went down there to the Midlands and South Western Junction Railway as far as Southampton and we followed this bit up here. We followed as far as Kingham and we've drawn a halt there since we'd met the main Worcester to Oxford line. And somebody said, why don't we finish it since it was known as the Cheltenham to Banbury Railway. We'll finish up to Banbury. Well, yeah, good idea. Except that once you reach uh, King Sutton, you're actually on the main line again. So not really interesting. So I'm picking up all these little railway stations in between as far as I can. Of course, a lot of them now are virtually nothing, but we'll have a look. But we're actually going to start in Hook Norton because there used to be a wonderful, wonderful viaduct there. What's left I don't know. Uh, all the photographs I can find are pretty old, so we might be out of luck. But let's go take a look at Hook Norton. This is the Bible for this railway and if you want to know all the details that's the one to get. That is today's objective. The ironwork on the top has gone, hopefully the stone pillars still remain. Oh my gosh look at that, isn't that wonderful? Okay, now the objective then is to get as close as we can. Well here we are in the middle of nowhere, armed with reams of paper, research no less. And we're, going to, we're not bothering with the station because that's a housing estate. But we should find a nice viaduct or two over here. And in fact what you're looking at there on the right, I pan round slightly, is the embankment. Which carries on down there. That's idyllic. Some nice railway fence posts lining the way. Then towering above us here, one of the piers to viaduct number one. Truly magnificent, the size of those blocks. And if we swing off to the left, pier number two. Look at the quality of the brickwork here and that beautiful slow taper. Off to the side the usual fence posting. This one actually growing through a tree or trees taking it over. Local resident come to see us. I haven't got time to mess about with you. Turn you in there your key, go and catch a mouse. If we head off to the other side and down the hill, hopefully without tripping over the cat, push off cat. No, I haven't got time to play. Play with you. Starts in the treetops and goes all the way down there. Beautiful. It's a valley with a stream in the bottom. From here you get the alignment of the other two. 
And if we look into the trees in the distance, and looking like something out of Jurassic Park, there's another of them. Can't really trace this one, it's right in the back of the woods. Amazing structures, built in the 1880s, all guarded by beautiful fence posts. Hooks for the wire. I think he's got bored. Creep away. Right, we're going to wheeze and puff up there. Hopefully. Up close and personal. What a construction. Right, having made it to the top, puffing and wheezing a bit. Mighty steam trains once travelled between these stone abutments on top of the pier and went thundering along there. Built in the 1880s, the steelwork was removed in the 1960s, 1964. Can't really make out that next pier, well, just in the undergrowth. We meanwhile will travel along here, which is on top of the embankment. we we'll go along here to the next viaduct. There are two. Viaduct number one, which is the one we've just seen, four piers. And now we're heading for viaduct number two, which had eight. They were so large for their time, they were actually called the Oxford Pyramids. And not to the difficulty of construction. Finally got rid of the cat, I think. Well, I was going to end up taking that one home. And this is why you don't wear shorts on these sort of ventures. Not advised. A jungle here. A little bit of ballast left over. Just about make it out. Back under cover of the trees and the path gets a little easier. And if we peer off over to the side, you can perhaps see how steep this embankment is. Okay. Cheaper than building piers, I would guess. I mean, it must be expensive piers. Arriving at the southern end of the embankment then. End of the piers. Would you call that a pier? I don't suppose it is really, is it? It's just the start. This is where we launch off to go across the uh, viaduct. Same as the end we were just looking at, really. I can't see much for trees. You get some idea of the steepness of the embankment here. And the stone pillars up on the top, or wall, abutments, whatever you want to call them. And we're carrying on along here. Ah, oh, there's the next one. Somewhat impenetrable. The official path has been uh, blocked off with a sign saying private. I don't know how that works. There's the next one. Really too close to get an impression of the height. Built using wooden scaffolding, and the uh, bridge on the top was steel, so I don't know why they use wooden scaffolding. At the Pillars on the other side are 60 to 80 feet, the ones on this side 100 feet, and some of the blocks are reckoned to weigh up to 9 tons. 
on wooden scaffolding. Find that hard to believe, but that's what it says. I don't know what that is or was. Uh, could it be clamping a rail chair? Most likely, I would think. I wonder how that got down here. Yes, I know it fell. And there's a pile of bricks there. Origin unknown. I'm hoping we've picked up the original pathway. Find out in a minute. Well, can't confirm we're on track as it were, but here's another pier. Mostly 90 to 100 feet on this side. Huge. And another slab of bricks. Curious, that. Just look at that brickwork. You have to choose the right one for the right slot. If some of them weigh 90 tons, you don't want to be moving them around too many times. Wow, must have been quite scary to have 90 tons dangling on a piece of rope on a wooden scaffolding. I'd say that was a candidate for a 90 ton block. The size of that thing. Alright, well, let's see if we can make more progress then. the stream in the bottom of the valley. I hope all that effort wasn't just because of that. Stick that in a pipe, job done I would have thought. And as we come out from the foliage, look at that. I wish somebody would do something about these trees. These two here seem relatively close together. There's one there, centre screen, trust me. And then there's the next one just to there. That's a pretty sight, isn't it? Reaching for the sky. 90 to 100 feet tall. That'll be 30 odd metres, I guess. So having crossed the stream, we now rise up the valley on the other side. That's a long way up. Must have been quite scary on top of that, I reckon. It's right up in the tree canopy. Like she's above the trees. Right on cue. The next one. That is engineering par excellence. And of course, as per usual, railway fence posts keeping guard, split sleeper. Certainly picturesque, worth the walk. a plinth on the top. I noticed if the other ones did or not. Okay. The gate. We'll go this way. Uh, a bit late for that. And according to the Hook Norton Historical Society, it's not private anyway. Oh well, cause no harm. And from here you can just about make out two piers. I didn't count those uh, pillars, did you? Oh, I'm sure there's eight. And there's the last remaining abutment up there. 
from here we get to see three in a row. Now we're faced with the embankment again then. Let's carry on see what we can find. Okay, so we've made it to the top of the embankment. Blimey, there's a climb. Still heading south. Oh, crikey. It's uh, nice to be on the flat again. That uh, was a bit uh, gruelling through there for an old person. But, uh, it's amazing, isn't it, with the landowners that uh, seek to keep people out. I uh, very often find that uh, it's not their land anyway, they've just kind of taken it over because it crosses their land. And then get a problem with this. And suddenly they hand it back to Network Rail. So, <laughs> rant over. Okay, well, nice to be on the level. See where this takes us. The embankment has been reducing and reducing. And now as it's more or less petered out, and we're going to change to a cutting, we're looking for a branch line off to the left, which apparently went to the ironstone workings. And it would have motored on down there. We'll continue this way. Now in a cutting proper, I'm about to go underneath the uh, road bridge. This has been turned into the Hook Norton uh, Nature Reserve. Nice idea. Hope they keep the paths in good trim, although on the evidence of what I can see before me, that's a vain hope. What a road bridge. In need of a bit of uh, TLC by the looks. I wonder if they go right through. No. So they must be anchored somewhere inside. I couldn't imagine they would have drilled right the way through there to be honest. A bit specialised. Yeah, nice bridge. As we carry on up the cutting See there's a retaining wall on that side and on the other side as well, looking at it. Columns of smoke and steam would have risen through those once upon a time. Wonderful. Well, somebody went to an awful lot of trouble to get that here. Correct. It needs to take it down the tip, I reckon. Well, they never learn. Thanks for that, whoever you were. Slightly muddy section here, and if we look to our left, we can see the issue. Bit wobbly, sorry about that, full stretch. Can you imagine the effort to dig this out? 176 feet deep in places, the cutting, 2,000 men laboured on it and 156 horses. Wow. No doubt they used the spoil from this to build the impressive embankment we were on earlier. But somebody had to go down there with their wheelbarrow, take it from here, drop it down there. One of the men involved complained about his wheelbarrow to the foreman. He said the wheel keeps going squeak, squeak, squeak. And the foreman said, you're sacked. Why? It should be going squeak, 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 squeak. Oh, the old ones are the best, aren't they? It's got very narrow here. We've had a embankment fall. Have to squeeze through here. Another damp patch, and this one I think is impenetrable. But we can see what we came to see. 
down there, which is the tunnel. That comes from the cutting through the tunnel. Bricked up in the usual way. Not worth risking your neck to uh, go look at a bricked up wall. Yeah, there you go. Right, we'll head back. There's a recent rock fall here as well. Very recent. It's possibly still a little bit unstable. So I think we're going to cut our losses here, guys. Hope that's all right. Here's the tunnel in actual use. And it was a landslip here that brought about the eventual closure of the line. Just a mere trickle of water really. I suppose it gets worse when it's raining but eventually it leads to the failure of the structure. Even something as well built as that. Okay back to here. And we'll climb it this time go back via road. Don't upset the gentleman who thinks he owns the place. He might have a shotgun and be a bit trigger happy. Up there then. At least we got what we came to see, didn't we? So I'm not too disappointed. Quite a long bridge. So we can pop over there amongst the nettles. And that's where we've just come from. And that's heading for the viaducts and Hook Norton. You wouldn't believe, would you, look at the depth of this cutting. How high those pillars had to be to cross the valley. It's a long way from the tunnel. Whatever. I wonder what they're hiding in there then. Hmm. I know you all want to see the station, and that there is the station hotel. That's the station entrance. There's now a modern housing development. And if we turn up the station approach, that's as near as it gets to remembering its heritage. And there is Hook Norton Station. Well, oh, there you have it. I enjoyed that, even with the blessed cat. If you enjoyed it too, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. Like and share, and I'll catch you on the next one.